We're revamping our website with a new offering which will come out very soon. It's going to highlight regular blogs and opinion pieces from our scholars, from leading minds in Australia and overseas. We'll also continue to welcome all the top class speakers uh, that we have from all around the world. We'll keep engaging with business and government to make sure that the right ideas are pre presented in front of them. We'll uh, keep looking at opportunities. Uh, There's a new one that's come up, actually. The universities are interested, some of them. We're having preliminary discussions as to whether or not Mankell scholars can get credit towards their degree for going on an internship. And finally, we'll look to partner with a whole load of organisations here in WA who will provide uh, work and other internship placements for our scholars. Uh, there's really no opportunity out there quite like what Mancal does, and, and we just feel so excited and proud to offer it. Uh, I encourage you all to please encourage any good, young, uh, passionate university students you know to get onto our website, have a look at the great opportunities on offer, and make an application. We're also looking to sponsor up to 20 scholars to the World Conference on Market Liberalisation. Now, this is going to be held in July in Bali. So, in effect, we're sponsoring young people to get out of the dead of Perth winter and into a tropical paradise. I mean, Bali in July. Economics is never so much fun. <laughs> There's just so much happening. And we're excited. We almost don't know what to do with ourselves. We're that thrilled about what's coming ahead. Now, to finish tonight's proceedings, a Mancal event would not be a proper Mancal event until we've heard from our founder and our chairman, our spiritual leader, ladies and gentlemen, Ron Manners. Following on from these future leaders, so for me this is a very humbling experience, but it's also a very gratifying experience seeing people like Paul and Becky and, uh, and uh, Genevieve and uh, Judy and the, and the rest of the team, and particularly my co-director, John Hyde, who have taken my part-time hobby up a level to where it's becoming a professional and very effective organisation. So that's so it's humbling but gratifying. So I'm, here I am. Now, now uh, just to finish off, about a year ago I had a birthday, <laughs> <laughs> at which someone who someone who knows me very well and his name is David Stevens in the back row. He uh, he made a few comments. He said. Uh, he referred to my mining years back in the 80s and 90s, and uh, where I was known to employ lots of young female geologists. Now, half of the audience thought that was because the female geologists were more attractive than the male geologists. The other half thought that it was me simply trying to be politically correct. None of the above. There were two reasons. One, one was that my mother was the first female to study geology at the Coverley School of Mines, so I knew that nothing wrong with female geologists. And, but the second most important reason was simply rational self-interest. I saw those female geologists as having a similarity to black lawyers in America back about that time where to be equal to the white lawyers they knew they had to be better. So our female geologists had that same sort of mindset. They knew to be as equal to the men geologists they just had to be better. And they were. And by being better they showed up the guys the guys had to lift their game. And Bob Bourbon, who was the director of that same company, Bob, we were very conscious of this. The guys lifted their game because the girls were <laughs> chewing them to pieces, and we all won. So it's a great, it's a great way. But it was really, it was rational self-interest that, that drove me into that thing. And I, uh, the reason I'm telling you this weird story is that tonight, 
sound reminds me a little bit of then, because we, we had these wonderful young students actually thanking us. But in fact, we're winning. It's a rational selfishness. They go out, go to all these places around the world, they come back with these ideas, they harvest these ideas from fresh fields, they bring them back, and we just use those ideas. It's fantastic. We do win. We have a great input from you guys. And I'd love to mention each of your input uh, that you've had and the ideas you're bringing back for us. I'll mention particularly Mark's. Mark, you heard how Mark has put, has put together a paper on how legislative uh, New Zealand uh, legislation handles the charities industry. I don't know what the content is, but I'm sure we'll learn a little bit, and I suspect that we'll probably find the New Zealand legislation on charities is as unworkable as it is here in Australia. I'm not surprised, because we understand the, uh, the public choice theory where we know that the people who are benefiting from these things put a lot more effort into it to word and frame this legislation so they get the benefits, but they spread the costs over a great number. So it's not life-threatening, so they don't march in the streets if they see something is wrong. But I think that that's what we'll, uh, that's what we'll learn. So we're, uh, we're very grateful of these ideas as they, as they come back. Um, and as Paul mentioned, our Mancal outgoing program was recognised by the uh, uh, at, at this International Antigua Forum, actually in Guatemala. And uh, uh, um, Jenny and I were there in January and we got some tremendous input into how to make what we have got, how to make it actually better. It's not that what we've got is perfect, it's just that by comparison, some of the other outgoing internships are simply to the stage where people they put the students on the plane, and that's it. There's no preparation and there's no formation of programs that these students can fit into. So what happens? These rookies arrive and they end up manning a photocopy machine or the, or the coffee machine for their months away and not really contributing much. And the, we, we were seen as a, as, a, as, a, as a foundation who are actually putting some effort into the students. But I think we're simply doing what you do in business. You wouldn't ever send an executive to another culture without having some understanding of that culture. Otherwise, it's just a waste of effort. So, uh, so uh, that's where we were. Now, I'm also uh, encouraged by the external support that, um, that we're getting from, uh, from a whole range of people and not only our board and our staff, but our ambassadors, and, and that was mentioned, and uh, Paul mentioned you all by name. It's tremendous that you come in with your financial support because under this unworkable legislation that I mentioned in Australia, MadCal is unable to do so many things that we would like to do. For instance, tonight, tonight's event is not something that a private ancillary fund like like Mancal is, we can't do those things. There's lots of reasons why we can't. Lots of things we can't. Very student events we can't. But the ambassadors are there with their contribution to pick up the things that we can't do. And it's very gratifying to me because I know that after I've gone, <laughs> uh, life goes on with Mancal and it'll build on this success. So, fellas, we are very, very... Uh, uh, grateful for that. So in, in conclusion, um, um, I think Paul's mentioned the uh, uh, board and our staff all by name. I'm very thankful to all of you and, um, and uh, I'd like to say how much we actually enjoy what we're doing at Mancal. Uh, we understand that clarity of purpose is critical for success and uh, for an empowered life. And uh, there is, um, we, uh, we are certainly clear about our purpose. And we're having, if we're having a positive impact on top of simply enjoying ourselves, well, that's an absolute bonus that we're taking it. <laughs> so thank you all once again. And uh, 
Thanks for the morning. I'll end up at the back of the room. <laughs>